Uh, Epsilon team at Ethereum Foundation and um, this talk uh, was originally about what's next in the EVM but uh, we shorted it a bit because lightning talks um, uh, but what I want to tell you about today is uh, quick to give you a quick introduction to EOF EVM object format um, but we have to start with the the current EVM we have uh, so one of the design goals of current EVM was simplicity. And uh, the thing is that we kind of overdone it. Um, and uh, the, the current EVM can can just execute whatever bytes that it's provi uh, you will provide to, to it. And uh, that's why I kind of sometimes thinking about it as a garbage eating machine. Uh, so it's it, it brings some success to EVM, but uh, must also bring some inefficiencies uh, to it. So um, one of these uh, inefficient aspects of EVM is that uh, you need to do a lot of work uh, except uh, uh, above the, the actual work the instructions are doing internally. Um, so this is like the checks that uh, every every step in the interpreter you will need to perform to make sure that the EVM works as a specification uh, wants it to go. Um, and uh, this is kind of the motivation we want to, to clean it up. And uh, the cleanup of that is to introduce a container, binary container for the, for the programs in EVM uh, so that it will kind of translate the, the mixture of different uh, features and some misfeatures in the in the, in the legacy EVM to something that is a bit more um, structured and uh, and and polished. Uh, so the the main aspect of uh, EOF is to uh, like provide some metadata about the program, uh, including the version number, and split the the bytes into code and data sections. Um, we can also do a bit more about that. This is the kind of the the continue co like the the next proposal that can be applied to the MEV of uh, EOF, uh, which is to introduce functions. So we can uh, partition the code section into more pieces uh, with additional uh, function type information. And to to work with the functions in EVM, we will introduce two. Uh, two new instructions. One is to call the other uh, code blob, and uh, and one is to return from the from the call to the to the caller. And uh, this, like um, the calling the functions internally, works like allows you to move you between the different uh, code sections. In the code sections, you can use uh, relative relative jumps, which would replace the ex existing dynamic jumps. And uh, yeah, so this is the, the control flow instructions that will allow you move it around in the code sections. And it won't, won't be allowed to actually uh, cross the boundaries of the, of the partitions. And as I mentioned, uh, having to this uh, control flow um, features, we can deprecate the existing, the, the existing uh, jumps semantics in particular, this is really useful because we can drop the jump list analysis, which has to be performed uh, about EVM programs before every execution. And if we kind of add up all of that, uh, we can, uh, with additional code ver uh, verification that will happen, we can eliminate the, this like uh, first three uh, checks in the EVM. So uh, this is the additional aspects that can be added to that, which we can like verify the, how the functions behave internally with like simple algorithms. But um, to sum up all of that, um, uh, yeah, this kind of improved version of EVM that has some nice control flow, have the code and data separation and support native functions. Mm. 
yeah, so that's that's mostly what I had to to show you today. Um, these are pointers where you can find more information. I think in particular the the FCC talk from this year. It's kind of the extended version of this talk. So uh, yeah, you're invited to to see it after it. Um, and yeah, the the five bullet points in the end are the, all the IPs that kind of specify the 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 broad aspect of of EOF. Um, yeah, I still have one minute, so if you want, you can shout some questions from the audience. <sighs> That's a hard question. I mean, we're kind of competing with the like proto dunk sharding and withdrawals right now. Um, so yeah, it's it's hard to tell actually. Uh, some of these aspects were pre prepared for uh, for Shanghai, but not like not all of the features I I talked about today. Yeah. Hi, uh, I have a quick question. I'm here. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, so in one of the slides you you you, you strike through um, stack underflow and stack overflow, uh, and because basically yeah, this one and only. Can you give me? A, can you give a bit more details around that? Yeah, this is done by code validation. So when you want to deploy a code, uh, it will go through additional validation process. And in particular, when you don't have dynamic jumps, you can you can statically check if the if the function will never stack underflow. The stack overflow is a bit more complicated, but you can compute like the maximum stack height the function reaches. And then whenever you call the function, you can check if you still have enough stack space available. So that's the, the second one is a bit more complex and it has some uh, trade-offs. Uh, I think it's, it's my time, so thank you very much. Thank you.